Hey everyone, Alan Schimmel, DevOps TV, DevOps.com here at IBM Interconnect 2017. We're out on the uh, exhibit hall floor where we ran into a company that I, I have a long relationship with, and that's Coal Fire Systems. And we're joined by Dan Fritchie, who is VP of Solution Principles. Correct. Uh, for Coal Fire. Dan, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Dan, as we were talking off camera, I um, I was kind of there at the beginning of Coal Fire, you know, back in my still secure days in the Louisville Superior Boulder area. And I remember Alan Ferguson and Rick Dakin coming up and telling us about what they were going to be kicking off here and how we might be able to work together. And and I, I pretty much known Coal Fire since then. I've seen tremendous growth we were talking again off camera and i think you said there's something like 500 people in coal fire these days yep yep we've um spanning continents you have an office in the uk correct uh, as well as several in the us yep so it's it's been a a long trip you mentioned you were there about eight years ago you came on board right yep and the company's about 15 years old. So, first of all, for our audience who may not even be familiar with Coal Fire, why don't you give us a little, beyond my personal knowledge, what what is Coal Fire? What do you guys do? Yeah, so Coal Fire is a cyber risk and advisory group. So, um, we have services only. So, we support uh, all of our customers um, with advice on security, um, understanding their risk. We do assessments and audits as well. Uh, and um, we cover all different industries. Um, yeah, and and of course, Coal Fire, I don't know if it's still true, but at one time you were probably one of the leading QSAs for PCI compliance in, in the world. Yeah, we're definitely known for our PCI compliance, so that's kind of where we started, um, and we're still a leader in PCI um, application security uh, mm -hmm. uh, encryption as well, point-to-point -point encryption, uh, but we've also spanned a whole bunch of other things. So we're in the healthcare space, mm -hmm. so we do all of the HIPAA and the high-tech. Uh, we're in the federal space, so we're the leading uh, FedRAMP auditor assessor okay. as well, um, but we also do all the others like FISMA and SOX and sure. ISO and, and on and on. All those great alphabets. That's right. Um, you know, Dan, and, and I mean, your the growth of Coal Fire has probably paralleled the growth we see, or at least the attention that the cyber and risk uh, industries have, have achieved. You know, we're about a month removed now from RSA conference mm -hmm. this year, where we, we had over 40,000 people. Um, you know, I think it's doubled probably in the last three to four years or something like that. Yeah, it seems RSA is bigger every year. That's for sure. Yeah, well, it's and, definitely bigger every year. But yeah. I, so I think, well, I, I've been going every year since 2002. And I've certainly seen it grow since then. Yes. But um, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's near doubled in the last five years. Yeah. Um, so that that's pretty impressive. But the industry as a whole has doubled. I mean, I remember back in my still secure days, there were something like 800 security vendors, of which I think there was only room for about 500. Right. And the other three were trying to figure out how to stay, keep the lights on. But today there are literally thousands of, of security tool and solutions vendors, not just, I don't even know if that includes the coal fires and the pure service plays right. out there in the world. So it's, it's a big thing. I think one of the things, again, that you and I spoke about, which is a key to coal fire success, is you're not you're not a reseller in wolf's clothing or sheep's clothing. Right. right? right. When, when we find something wrong, we don't try to offer something uh, to, to fix it. We'll offer advice, uh, but we have no products that we sell. Um, well, you can tell them how to fix which, it. And we give right? them advice on how to fix it. Um, you don't want to be like that Geico commercial where you're just a security monitor, right. not a security guard. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but but you don't actually sell them a particular tool or or productized solution. Right. We and partner with everybody kind of in between. So our customers um, uh, who need their services, we can rec make recommendations and, and you know point them in certain directions. Uh, yep. But then we partner with those companies as well, just kind of like we're, what we're doing here at IBM. And why don't we talk a little bit about your IBM relationship that brings you to Interconnect this year? 
Yeah, so we've got a, a growing and, and long-standing relationship with IBM as well. Um, we've done a lot of their uh, third-party independent needs uh, for pen penetration testing. Um, we've also done uh, PCI assessments for them and HIPAA and SOX and several other things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now we're super active with their um, Cloud Secure platform and uh, helping to kind of shape where that's headed and make sure that the security and all the lines up with all the different compliance standards and regulations across the board. Very cool. Um, so one of the things that, you know, I, I constantly preach, especially to like my children and their friends is that, you know, the skill set for cybersecurity folks, whether it be consultants for a coal fire mm -hmm. or, or working within an organization, cybersecurity team is, is in high demand today, right? I forgot what the number was of open recs right now for security uh, folks with just within the US I mean oh, yeah. let alone the rest of the world how how are you guys finding recruiting I mean as you're growing so rapidly yeah. you need to add people to the bench yep how, how are you finding recruiting with that um, that's always a challenge in this industry there's no question about that um, we recently acquired Veris group um, so that, uh, that helped increase our, our staff as well as uh, our capabilities. So mm -hmm. a lot of our uh, labs and penetration testing and high-end red teaming things, as well as uh, more access to government systems and customers and things in that space. So acquisition is definitely one of the options. Uh, yep. But uh, yes, we're always on the lookout for good talent. Um, what do you think, where, where are your high growth areas going forward? Uh, you know, we still have, we're still seeing a steady, you know, steady slow increase with, you know, the PCI space, it's changing. And so we're always, you know, trying to be a thought leader um, to help move things forward, you know, encryption and all of those kinds of things. Um, healthcare has kind of jumped here and there and, and, you know, it's still on the increase, but really the biggest one is probably the federal space. So uh, the last few years that went, uh, you know, at a much steeper curve uh, in terms of that. And um, yeah. It's, uh, it's been an interesting ride to keep up with all that. To say the least. I was at RSA, as I mentioned last month, and yep. we did this whole thing on DevSecOps. And, and really, beyond the term, it, you know, it talks to bringing together security teams with, with, uh, with the development teams and the ops teams working together. We're, you mentioned AppSec is something you guys are, are kind of focusing in on. Are you seeing this sort of mantra to, to work closely with the dev and ops teams going forward? Yeah, the sooner we can get in with a development team in, you know, as early as their, you know, SDLC, their software development lifecycle, the earlier we get in there, the more we can help them to, to be efficient on the back end. It's always cheaper and easier to, to develop correctly the first time rather than have to go back and fix things. So the sure. sooner we're brought in to help advise on a project, um, the better off that project typically is when it comes to being secure in the first place when it when it's ready to roll out. And uh, uh, and then also meeting whatever compliance standards they might need to meet that they don't even know about at the time. Sure. So we, we call that in DevOps shifting security left, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In, in, into, the, into the dev thing. Is, is that, so how do you, how do you explain that to your, to your clients, right? Why, why, you know, yes, the sooner we get in, the quicker we can save you money and the less heartache you're going to have down the, yep. down the path. But it's almost by definition, if they don't know that to begin with, they almost call you in too late. Right. Yeah, that does happen. And we come in and we'll help, you know, at any stage in the process. Um, and it always has a certain value for that. But, you know, a lot of them, especially uh, if they're doing development, they know what it means on the back end to have to go back and revise things. Yeah. So usually they understand that very quickly. Yep. And then finally, Dan, you guys had uh, mentioned you have offices now in the UK yep. as well as throughout the U.S., what other geographies are you, is Coalfire looking potentially to, to expand to? Yeah, I mean, we, we service companies worldwide, um, especially big companies like IBM and other global partners. So we, you know, we will, we do kind of go everywhere. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't have, you know, immediate plans to go to, you know, Asia Pac or whatever, but we do, you know, we do take a lot of opportunities and, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Promise, this really is the last question. <laughs> How's Interconnect been for you? Oh, it's been great. Um, we've met a lot of partners. Um, we've been uh, collaborating with a lot of uh, different folks, um, High Trust, Intel, and IBM. Um, and we're kind of the, the glue in the middle, um, kind of you know bringing all of, uh, the different components together and, and making some great solutions. So we're excited to, to continue to build on those relationships and partnerships and, and move forward. Very cool. 
Well, thanks for joining us here on DevOps TV. Yeah, thanks for having me. Say hello to my friend Alan Ferguson. I will do that. Continued success with Coal Fire Systems. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps TV here at IBM Interconnect 2017.